Welcome students to the online NPTEL course Contemporary Architecture and Design. In the previous class, uh, previous two classes we started discussing about the postmodernist movement and we discussed about the historicism and um, uh, high tech architecture. So, uh, if we look at the timeline uh, of postmodernist movement, uh, so um, uh, from 1980s onwards, uh, mostly the postmodernist movement started, but it's not uh, a hard and first timeline after historicism, uh, high tech started. It's not like that. So, uh, most of them uh, emerged uh, simultaneously, and many of the cases we have seen in the historicism as well. Uh, a few of the uh, styles of architecture, which a uh, few of the examples of architecture which falls under historicism, was uh, started before even a uh, few of the examples were bef uh, before 1980s actually and uh, uh, because uh, in the modernism phase 3 many of the architectural movement may, uh, many uh, like brutalism uh, metabolism and uh, tensile and shell has uh, some features which was uh, common uh, to postmodern as well as modern because it was gradually shifting towards the modernist to uh, postmodernist movement after the uh, end of world wars. So, the modernist movement uh, was from 1920s and the 1980s, uh, they have a particular features. So, if we look at the modernist uh, movement, especially the internationalist movement, uh, their particular uh, style was there. And uh, so, in the historicism we have seen uh, and uh, all this movement which comes under postmodernist movement has their own way of uh, reaction against the modernist architecture style. Uh, and they are also different uh, uh, from each other, uh, but um, uh, these all architecture style which falls under the postmodernist um, um, era uh, has the own way of uh, uh, um, criticizing modernism and also few of the examples or few of the uh, movements of postmodern, uh, uh, few of the postmodernist movement have taken inspiration from modernism but changed it in their own way. So, in the historicism what happened, we have seen earlier that uh, they have rejected all this modernist um, approach of uh, abstraction and non-contextuality -con uh, and non uh, not uh, blending history with the architecture. So, they have went back to the pre-modern era, which is uh, pre-industrial evolution. They have taken inspiration from uh, uh, post-Renaissance and the before-Renaissance architecture style. Uh, uh, we have seen uh, how the um, um, uh, uh, examples from uh, how uh, visual um, uh, design from um, uh, Greek and European architecture and Egyptian architecture was taken as well as uh, the uh, Gothic architectures uh, flying buttress was also taken into historicism, uh, which in modernist movement there was absolutely devoid of uh, historic depiction uh, only uh, in the initial phases Chicago uh, school was uh, of thought was there, but mostly uh, when we um, depict the term modernist, uh, the, uh, if we uh, consider the second phase of modernism, uh, which is internationalism and um, then monolithic and also Bauhaus. Uh, so, these are the high modern, uh, the uh, main characteristics of modernism was uh, um, here. So, function uh, uh, was predominant, form follows function and um, less is more, these concepts were. Uh, they, these these uh, um, three movements were manifestation of these concepts. So, historicism opposed that and went to, uh, to the pre-modern era. But in high tech, we have seen that uh, they have taken inspiration from metabolism, which is part of this uh, late modern uh, era, which has some connection with the post uh, when modernism was going towards the postmodernism uh, movement. Uh, uh, so, high tech have taken uh, inspiration from a metabolist uh, uh, movement where uh, the service uh, services or the servant becomes the ornamentation. Uh, and uh, we will see how neo modern have taken um, inspiration from modernism. So, neo modernism, as the term says, uh, is, a, uh, is, is a new way of looking at modernism. So, there is a connection again. So, historicism uh, crossed the modernism and went uh, back to the pre modern era. Um, uh, high tech have taken inspiration and changed modernism. So, as the new modern, so they have uh, taken inspiration from modernism but changed it. So, we will see how uh, uh, the things uh, which were there in the modernism uh, like uh, less is more was changed into new modernism, but lot of uh, elements of modernism was there in the new modern uh, phases. But still this is post modern because of the eclectic uh, uh, eclecticism uh, or uh, taking inspiration from different um, um, uh, elements and putting uh, more than one uh, visual stylistic thing into uh, the visual board. So, we will see a mixture of uh, visual elements into the new modern phase.
So if you look at the photographs uh, here, uh, this is uh, Villa Savoy by Le Corbusier, which is uh, in internationalist movement. Um, uh, so in historicism, this is historicism by uh, Robert Venturi's Piazza, uh, Piazza di Italia. We have seen how it has uh, taken inspiration from the flying buttresses, uh, uh, which we are seeing in this Notre Dame uh, Cathedral in uh, Paris, uh, which is uh, of uh, Gothic uh, style. And uh, these flying buttresses, what you are seeing, has uh, been translated into the continent contemporary uh, style. So, uh, and there was no connection with the modernism with uh, this building. So, it went past the modernism and taken uh, the history into the context with, where uh, modernism did not consider history, uh, the influence of history into the uh, design. But here, this is the Pompidou Center by Renzo Piano and Richard Rogers. Uh, they have taken inspiration from one phase, which is uh, the metabolist movement like Nagakin Capsule Tower and uh, uh, the Richard Medical Laboratory. Uh, so they have they have the servant and served concept. So the servant spaces were becoming the ornamentation, and but this is an ex exaggeration of that. And also in the other um, uh, buildings like Lloyd Building, uh, we have seen all the services were exposed outside, and also there are a uh, few examples like uh, Tore Akbar. Um, and, uh, and Norman Foster designs. Uh, so these new materials were giving an uh, idea of futuristic architecture. So uh, this new glass, tinted glass, and also the uh, LED lights uh, in Torre Akbar, we have seen how uh, this was uh, changing the uh, facade treatment. But uh, these all these uh, perspective was from uh, aesthetic perspective. Uh, so this is uh, that is why this aesthetic uh, uh, is um, having an importance. And if you look at the fa uh, facade treatment, it is also very, um, uh, uh, it is a lot of elements are there on the facade. So as the other uh, examples from the um, high-tech high architecture. So, this high-tech high architecture is not uh, talking about the less is more which was there in the internationalist movement or the high modern era. Uh, that is why this becomes a uh, false under the post-modernism, though this has a connection with the late uh, phase 3 uh, modernism. So, is the uh, in the uh, neo modern. Uh, so, new, in the neo modern, we will see lot of rectilinearity use of white, which is uh, the color of uh, color as a pure color, and uh, 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 which uh, we have seen in the modernism. White, black, and gray uh, was the dominant color, as well as the uh, three primary color, which were not there in this uh, example. So, um, uh, in this uh, two post modernist movement, where they are, uh, they were open to the different um, uh, colors and mixture of different elements were there. But uh, if we uh, look carefully, there was a uh, duality of the design. So, one part of the design is modern and then it changed into the postmodern style. So, if we look at so a lot of uh, straight lines and cuboids are creating one part of the design, but other side you will see a lot of uh, rec uh, curvilinearity is also added and these uh, facades which are protruding out is uh, creating a visual where form becomes very important and form becomes the protagonist of the architecture. So, these duality of the style, one side is rectilinear, one side is curvilinear, is this uh, uh, concept of neo-modern where modern is there from and taken from an aspect of postmodernist approach. Uh, so there are other uh, postmodernist movement which will uh, which uh, we will discuss gradually, and they have their own way of um, uh, 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 looking at modernism and then uh, the reaction against uh, the modernist approach. So, uh, if we dis, uh, uh, take a new modern as a style, the new modern's architectural features are as follows. So, it uh, talks about new simplicity. So, uh, what happened generally uh, in this um, historic system was the first. Uh, it started in the beginning of the postmodernism, and there are a lot of elements as we have seen in the Michael uh, Graves' works and um, uh, Philip Johnson's one of the work, and then. Uh, um, uh, uh, Roger Moore's work. Uh, so, the, uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, elements which is uh, following supporting the thought of eclecticism, different uh, materials, different colors are creating one visual palette. So, there was uh, a garish design which is there. So, uh, then after that, uh, so it is um, uh, new modern uh, um, architects thought that uh, modernist was uh, uh, visual vocabulary was uh, uh, they went back to the modernist uh, visual voca uh, vocabulary. Uh, so, these two uh, neo modern and uh, uh, neo modern started uh, uh, on, almost on the same time, but neo modern was taken uh, farther, but historicism ended. Uh, it is not ended completely, but uh, the uh, uh, 
number of uh, buildings which uh, started falling with the, within this uh, particular phase was gradually becoming lesser. So, uh, they went back to the new simplicity where they have uh, uh, and uh, for the simplicity they have found uh, the simplicity in the modernism because before that there was a, um, uh, this uh, pre industrial revolution uh, buildings where uh, there were a lot of ornamentation because baroque, rococo and all this uh, uh, gothic style mannerism was uh, there. So, simplicity uh, for take, uh, taking inspiration uh, uh, to create a simplistic building they had to um, consider the modernist uh, movement where less is more was a concept uh, especially in the internationalist movement. So, there was a reaction against the complexity and eclecticism of postmodern architecture which was happening on the same time. Uh, so, there was other postmodernist architecture like critical regionalism and uh, deconstructivism uh, which is different. So, that time the postmodern architecture which was going parallelly in, uh, with the neo-modern was historicism. Um, uh, so, uh, this was uh, they are talking about eclecticism and complexity was coming from the historicism than they opposed to that. So, it was a reform of modern approach. So, a modern approach was taken as uh, the inspiration, but it was not translated as it is. So, it changed into the post uh, uh, from the postmodernist uh, angle of uh, uh, thought. Uh, so, neo-modern uh, denotes the time frame when the postmodernist historicism uh, was warning off or it was fading away and postmodernist uh, historicism was uh, uh, starting in the beginning and then gradually it went to, to the other postmodernist movement which uh, came um, uh, after the historicism. Uh, historicism. Reaction against the predatory result of market economy and capitalism, which was historicism, was about that. Because if you look at the historicism, this attraction value of a design which falls under historicism is is is, is much more. Uh, for example, if you look at this um, uh, Michael Graves uh, design, which uh, he is designing in the uh, Walt Disney Center, so the uh, the Swan Tower, Dolphin Tower, so uh, he is making swans and dolphins. So these are uh, a very popularist approach of design and then Walt Disney the tar uh, target audience were kids and they will uh, look at the statue of swan and dolphins and then um, um, uh, so, th these are grabbing uh, attention of attraction uh, very quickly and there were a lot of colors uh, so as the other examples of Michael Graves uh, design which uh, Portland uh, bil uh, buildings and uh, other buildings so there are a lot of different colors and a lot of uh, gimmicky elements are there which uh, is attracting people. So, this is a popularist approach of design uh, and, uh, and, and which is uh, um, uh, following the market economy and capitalism and it is not a simplistic uh, functionist uh, 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 just for pure function. There was a lot of elements were added, uh, cladding were added which is just for visual and uh, to attract people's at, uh, attention. Now, neo-modernism is describing a school of thought which is driven from modernism, the minimalist approach of modernism, but it did not become minimal as modernism because uh, they were from postmodern era and the postmodern uh, socio-cultural context was different. So, uh, the modern minimal thing was added with the duality and then again the complexity started coming. So, it was a uh, uh, it was driven out of modernism as well as it was also criticizing modernism a uh, modernist approach because it was a postmodernist uh, they went uh, from a postmodernist context. Now, one of the example of uh, uh, one of the famous uh, uh, designer and architect of uh, neo modern era was Richard Mayer. So, uh, Richard Mayer's uh, uh, most of the work has a similar visual palette and there was a, sim a simile and there was a coherence in his design. So, when I will discuss few of this uh, his work and you will uh, see a visual simile and a pattern a uh, visual design pattern and coherence in um, his design. Most of his design has a lot of similarity with the modernist. Uh, uh, approach of uh, design which uh, that is why this new modern term comes. Uh, so, this is a new approach of modernism. So, this uh, uh, the a new revival of modernism was also uh, um, um, happened in many um, uh, also before uh, um, a new revival of a particular uh, design stage uh, design uh, ism was uh, um, uh, happened before as well. Uh, for example, neoclassical, neo palladian and all this was this uh, new way of looking at uh, the particular uh, movement which happened before. 
So one of the uh, example is uh, New Harmony Athenium, uh, which is in India and USA, which is in uh, which um, was designed in 1979, which was uh, in the uh, just in the beginning of the modern um, uh, postmodernist movement. So this is a visitor center at New Harmony, uh, which is named after Greek Athenium Temple of uh, Athena, and which is in Greece, and uh, it's a representative of Richard Mayer architecture style and. Uh, many of his architecture style has uh, her similarity, so it is uh, one of his earliest work, and he uh, uh, the later work also has a similar visual palette. So this design is based on the modernity and the critical refine, uh, refinement. So we, uh, uh, in um, his design, we will see a duality. One is uh, coming directly from the modernist approach, and one is the critical uh, refinement of modernity and the um, approach which is coming from the postmodern. So the modernity which is there, so this is the building, uh, we will describe why this building, um, what is the duality of the modern, uh, uh, um, of this design and how the modernist and postmodernist is uh, blending and amalgamating with each other. So this is the extensive use of white color as we have uh, uh, discussed, the white color is coming from the modernist movement and postmodernism is not about just one particular color, so there will be a mixture of different color, but uh, the color is coming from the modernism. Now, use of predominant rectilinear design element that is also coming from the postmodernism. So, predominant rectilinear cuboidal design is a postmodern design, and uh, the new material is also the postmodern design. The material palette, which is similar to the internationalism, this uh, steel and glass um, and white color, these uh, are the colors which are coming from the internationalist, uh, mostly this. Um, modernity when we are talking about the internationalist uh, modernity because we, uh, art deco art um, art deco is also modernism but uh, here it's coming from the um, uh, second phase of modernism which is internationalist movement now the criticism is uh, uh, the criticism not the criticism of this building the criticism of modernity is uh, uh, how he is doing it uh, by the duality of the design now uh, in this design throughout this design you will look at a lot of duality in the design so one side you will see a lot of uh, solid element which is added and one side you will see a void so as the previous uh, exam, uh, example there was this charge the jubilee charge where there's one side is a rectilinear one side is a curvilinear so here in this uh, side you will see solid and there are a lot of void uh, through these void you will see different spaces so uh, here your eye will uh, have one solid I will see a uh, one solid plate but here when you uh, look at this so um, I will go through pass through this void and punctuation so a lot of different punctuation on different layers were added so uh, here this punctuation is through the nature and here this punctuation is from outside to interior so different punctuation uh, levels of punctuation is added in this side and also the dynamic line which is if you look at this line which is continuation of this uh, these dynamic broken lines are there which is not modern no, modern will be uh, less is more which is just few lines and that creates a modern uh, uh, modernism but here there are a lot of lines and lot of punctuations lot of solid uh, play of solid and void and uh, actually in this building you will see a lot of elements which is combining so that is going against the concept of modernity now here in this composition also you will see a duality in the design. So if you look at the visual frame of the design, if, you, if uh, this is the center line, on this side you will see a very rectilinear um, uh, facade of design and another side which is the, uh, uh, becoming in the uh, main uh, visual frame is a very curvilinear way of design. But here you will see a strip window which uh, is kind of a uh, strip uh, or ribbon window which is coming from a modernist movement and a lot of pilotes and which is hanging, uh, the mass is hang hanging on top uh, which gives anti-gravity uh, look. But um, uh, this angular uh, facade which is breaking which is not um, in the right angle with the other um, uh, elements, uh, you will, uh, th that is not coming from the modernism. Now here if you uh, look at the visual why uh, this uh, building's uh, visual is so important, uh, be becoming a protagonist. Here there is a uh, dynamic element which has a uh, more punctuation which is the staircase which is the open uh, staircase which uh, gives a punctuation is balanced with this element which is just a visual element this does not have any function. 
and then also the rhythm and uh, rhythm uh, is maintained so there's a, a more void and then as a solid thing and then again there's punctuated with a void and then solid and then void is balancing it so um, um, and that is why this two becomes in the center and um, uh, juxt uh, and inter um, uh, within this interface there was this solidity is there and also we will see a lot of this duality solid void and this is also duality and then rectilinearity curvilinearity that is also duality so these elements are added into the uh, in his design also from the other side also you will see this solid and void is uh, there so very, very uh, um, uh, rectilinear as well as static design if you look at this part this is very static and then um, it created a dynamic form and in the, uh, a, a dynamic elements in the other side now also in this side you will see uh, this kind of duality in the in the uh, in his design and uh, in the same time in the inside you will see a uh, uh, extensive use of white which is there but within that uh, interior as well there's uh, there's a lot of elements a lo lot of different uh, angles are added so uh, this ramp is creating a different um, uh, inclination which is not horizontal so there's a uh, horizontal uh, horizontal vertical with horizontal and vertical line there's angular lines are also uh, adding so here also this uh, you will see this freestanding uh, elements uh, with this columns and this facades which is just for aesthetic um, enhancement so these are not solving a pure uh, function uh, fu uh, it's not coming from a pure functionalist approach so within that if you look at so this uh, uh, his design this is a particular style of uh, uh, elements he uses he, uh, in the interior as well as the exterior of his design so you have also seen in the previous element where uh, from the exterior uh, 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 this staircase also has this similar kind of railing this uh, has a similarity of the ship's uh, white railing which we sh uh, see in the uh, ship's um, on the on the on the deck and this is used in the, um, uh, his design in Richard Mayer's design extensively and also in the in inside you will see uh, a lot of elements but the unifying factor is the color which is white so everything is painted in this same white color which uh, which uh, subdues the complexity of the form now in the jubilee church of rome which is designed in the, uh, 2003 much later has the duality uh, of the design and which also and uh, but here uh, the again the same white color is there uh, uh, the similarity with the modernism is this elements which is uh, the steel and glass which comes from the modernism is there and the white color which also comes from the modernism but if you look at the modernism is uh, talking about this uh, rectilinear uh, elements but there's a juxtaposition of lot of rectilinear element so it's not a simplistic rectilinear element lot of uh, different rect uh, uh, cuboids are amalgamating together and they are creating this uh, element which is uh, a manifestation uh, um, of postmodern manifestation of a modernist approach and on the other side you are uh, seeing this curvilinear elements which is balancing this uh, rectilinearity from the other side and uh, these protrusions are purely for uh, visual purpose and also here you are seeing this rhythm and rhyme which is again uh, getting followed in the uh, straight line on the other side now uh, another example of uh, Richard Mayer works is a Museum of Contemporary Art in Barcelona, Spain. Here also you will see these white railings um, um, in, uh, in, in, in these uh, areas and also inside this building which is the style of Richard Mayer's work and white is the color which uh, he uses uh, from exterior to our, uh, interior of this uh, uh, design. Now if you look at, so this is the glass curtain wall which uh, has a similarity with the internationalist uh, way of um, uh, design and but one side of this glass curtain wall is the curvilinear form and the other side is the rectilinear form and within the rectilinear form if you look at this punctures and these elements they are purely fun uh, 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 aesthetic elements so these elements are just for aesthetic f um, uh, purpose and the punctures has um, a different it's not a simplistic rectangular puncture so it uh, some parts are added on, uh, on the other side so it's also um, um, uh, things are added from a visual perspective and not um, uh, following the concept of uh, less is more 
and uh, uh, the another um, uh, architect in this um, uh, era of new modernism was John H. Duck. Uh, he have uh, he designed three wall houses. Out of that, um, the second wall house was made, and this is uh, de um, uh, made in the uh, Netherlands. And uh, he was designing this uh, from um, during the 1970s, um, but it was built. Uh, he changed uh, the design, and it was built in uh, 2001. Uh, so in this, uh, in his design also, there is a, uh, there will be, uh, the, uh, you will see the blend of modernism with with the postmodernism. Here in this design, if you look at, so this uh, uh, elements which uh, gives the uh, rectangle. Um, um, gray block which comes from uh, internationalist modernism and then ribbon windows and uh, lifting the building on top of the uh, ground which is uh, uh, following the concept of philotis and also the gray elements are there but on the both the sides there are uh, totally postmodern elements are there but which is a manifestation of modernism um, and uh, blended with the postmodernism but here also you will see uh, a ribbon window but there is a curvilinear uh, surface and the color which is orange is not a pure color because it's a mixture of red and uh, yellow and uh, also here uh, and this is this is the um, orangish pink or uh, some uh, some color which is not a pure color and then uh, this yellow is also not a pure uh, yellow because uh, pure yellow uh, which uh, Bauhaus and the institutional movement use that's a pure yellow so there's a impurity in this yellow and then uh, purple and sap green was used and uh, here um, if you look at so there are a lot of design elements are going on so this is not a pure um, uh, minimalist approach of uh, dealing with modernity but elements from modernism is uh, coming within the design um, so if you look at uh, this um, design in plan so it has a spine which is a modernism a modernist uh, um, um, element uh, uh, this 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 is a freestanding wall and because of this wall this is uh, called wall house uh, most of uh, all of his wall house has a wall and then a uh, particular element and other wall on the other side or some other uh, and then the main uh, visual elements which is coming as a curvilinear wall on this background all of this um, history wall house has a similar concept but the compositions are different but in this uh, design if you look at the spine and this wall is uh, from a uh, a modernist um, approach. So this wall is a grey concrete wall without any colour and then this is coming from a cuboidal um, element which has a strip window which is uh, um, standing on uh, which is uh, elevated and the ground is not uh, touched. So this is coming from a modernist uh, approach but on the other side there is a very free and um, uh, liberal uh, way of designing uh, curvilinear wall on the both the side which is uh, uh, opposing the style of modernism. Now if you look at the, the section this is uh, the section of uh, the building and uh, this uh, this building you will look at uh, the modernist uh, part is here and this uh, wall uh, which looks modern but it uh, does not um, follow the modernist uh, approach because this is the non functional uh, this this wall does not uh, have a function uh, function it's like a visual element uh, of uh, it acts as a background of these three rooms and uh, if you look at uh, these three rooms also has a strip window but then the strip windows are carved and blended and these uh, three rooms also are coming from a, a modernist approach which is has an anti gravity look and which will float and um, uh, so how he is achieving that uh, this uh, if you look at this uh, uh, second floor's uh, floor is not uh, exactly the uh, uh, first floor's roof there is a gap so because of this gap so as in the in the in the uh, ground floor and first floor there is a gap so because of this gap this uh, gives the anti gravity look and the horizontal band of uh, solid and void which is also there from coming from a, a modernist approach but uh, totally in the postmodern context so if you look at this uh, so these elements which looks like a uh, uh, which has a ribbon window but it's curved and twisted and then different colors are there which is uh, so taking up a modern thing and blend uh, making it a, a postmodern um, element is uh, what new modern is and also in this uh, ribbon window it's it's turned and twisted in a different direction but this is the wall which uh, you know, which acts as a backdrop of this uh, main visual composition. Uh, this is, has a lot of similarity with the modern uh, modernist uh, style, which is just a straight wall, which is grey and uh, not plastered concrete. 
so there's a freestanding 80 meter by four, um, um, uh, 40 meter high wall, which is almost like a three story, um, uh, um, 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 uh, three story height a wall, which is exposed concrete and rectilinear wall. And then uh, in the contrast, there's three story curvilinear uh, walls with vibrant color which is constructed as a free uh, facade which uh, is floating on top of each other and uh, freely flowing uh, and uh, as it is curvilinear. Uh, so uh, out of these um, um, you can look at the other wall houses and you will see the similarity of the wall houses and how it was blending modernity with the postmodernist approach. The another uh, neo modern architect was Peter Eisenman, but Peter Eisenman's uh, many of the uh, few of the architecture style also falls under another <coughs> uh, post modernist movement which is deconstructive style. So, his deconstructive uh, um, buildings are um, different, which will be discussed in the deconstructive movement, but many of his buildings are um, within the uh, neo modern style as well. So, this is a cardboard house which is in uh, Cornell in uh, USA, which is designed in 1970. Five, which is in the beginning of this um, uh, postmodern era. Uh, uh, this is a, uh, he have designed a series of houses, uh, 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 and these are called houses of cards. Uh, and this is called cardboard architecture or paper architecture, as uh, it looks as a arrangement of different card, uh, cardboard, which is uh, like a two D walls. And uh, so this, this mo most of the elements, if you look at, uh, does not look uh, 3D. It's like arrangement of 2D cardboards. And he actually used to design uh, this building as uh, from a model. Um, like he used to um, uh, make the model using the car uh, cardboard first, and they have, uh, and um, then he have designed it, and then he have changed it to, into a building. So we'll see how this, um, uh, what um, was the how uh, his process. This process was. Uh, uh, the final design was a manifestation of this process. We'll see how um, uh, this happened, and uh, so uh, it ca came from a, a juxtaposition of different cardboard, which is a 2D cardboard, and then uh, finally he fitted the function. Function. So form was before, and then the function. So form was the main protagonist. So it went back and forth, form and function. But uh, form was uh, has its uh, uh, um, imp importance. Of form is uh, uh, quite high in this design. And all these elements which are added in front of this are cardboard. So these are the uh, strips of cardboard which you have designed and then changed into the design. And then all these elements are um, is looks like a 2D different cardboard and the uh, punctuation within the cardboard are added into the design element. So uh, that is why this, uh, uh, his, um, th this design is ca called um, um, uh, house of cards or the cardboard architecture or the paper architecture. It is an envelope or, or, and the structural elements are manifestation of the grids and slabs, which was gr these grids and slabs were translation from this cardboard which he have made um, uh, in, in his model, initial models. This architecture is stri uh, strictly plastic. No relationship was there in the construction and the pure um, uh, and and uh, it is purely ornamental. That's why uh, when he is making the cardboard uh, models uh, and translating it into the construction in this element, so uh, it started from the ornamentation on the aesthetic perspective, and then the functions were uh, coming later. And the construction and uh, there was no connection with the construction. So a lot of uh, areas you will see uh, there was the. Um, uh, dilemma with the construction and the uh, elements which is coming uh, within the uh, design. So, and uh, the construction was not the main protagonist, uh, and from uh, it was not the starting point of the design. The starting point of the design is the visual and the uh, juxtaposition of different cardboard, uh, cardboard elements. He called it a post uh, functionalism as um, uh, he depicted it. So, uh, functionalism talks about uh, uh, the function, like um, the uh, Bauhaus and Chicago school was functionalism, and this is post functionalism, um, he called it. And so, function comes later, and uh, that is what he is uh, uh, talking about. So, here in the post modern area, uh, era, uh, the function follows form. It's not uh, f uh, form f uh, uh, form follows uh, function. So f 
form comes first and then function. So, here uh, in this design this uh, this is how he have designed it. So, this is how uh, the conceptual models uh, uh, the sketches and the ax uh, axonometry looks like, but he have made it with the cardboard. So, some of the cardboard is ca coming through um, the, the building and these grids are passing through the building. Now, if you look at this side this is the interior of this uh, design many of the elements are not uh, uh, following each other. So, this column and this beams and uh, many of this element. So, there is a gap between this because he have uh, he wanted this shift in the grid line. So, these are not fun, uh, uh, following of uh, structural grid. So, many of the grids are shifting uh, from each other. It is not uh, derived from a structural perspective. It derived from an aesthetic perspective and the structure and form uh, function was fitted into the form later. And uh, there was uh, different colors added to, into the design which uh, has some similarity with the modernist color within uh, inside inside this interior. Uh, but uh, from outside uh, this is this is uh, totally white. Now, if we uh, look at uh, the Schroeder house which is designed by Jerry Ridwell which was part of the Destigial movement there was a connection with that. Now, uh, in the Schroeder house why Schroeder house was not exactly uh, 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 what was happening in the Bauhaus, uh, Bauhaus and the Estigil was um, uh, parallel, but Bauhaus approach and uh, the Estigil approach was different as we have discussed. Bauhaus was uh, talking about the form uh, will follow the function. So, function will come first and then the form and no extra element will be added, but the Estigil was an art movement. So, in the Estigil where Mondrian's paintings and other um, 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 painter's painting was there where uh, it was coming from a visual perspective. So, lot of elements were added just for visual in the uh, Ridveld house that is why this is this Tijil building not a, a Bauhaus building and all these elements um, and the colors which is protruding out is a visual uh, element. So, you, you will see a lot of um, similarity with this that is why this is new modern it is not taking exactly the modern, but an offshoot of a modern and which has a more visual um, perspective that they are taking. So, uh, uh, so uh, there is no uh, uh, the relationship with uh, this uh, Peter, uh, Peter Eisenman buildings with Bauhaus is lesser, but relationship with this uh, uh, to uh, the Estigil is more because the Estigil has a visual perspective because it is, was coming from a visual design um, art and design. Now, uh, inside this building why this is not coming from a, con uh, a construction and a functional process. If you look at the bedroom, so this uh, column is not going through. So, uh, this there is a punctures which is going from the roof and the, uh, uh, and the wall as well as in this floor. Uh, so, if you look at the bedroom, so these two bedroom uh, beds can never be uh, clubbed together because there is a void within the bed, within the uh, room and uh, there, there is a punctuation between these two beds. So, this was just a manifestation of cardboard. So, there was a punctuation of this card which he wanted this greed to pass through. So, that is why he want uh, so uh, the if, if he, uh, he is designing this bedroom. So, there is this punctuation he wanted to maintain the punctuation for the totally for the visual purpose and not from uh, coming from the functional aspect. And also here within this uh, living room these punctuations are giving the uh, sense of um, uh, this cardboard which was passing through this building. So, as in the similar uh, 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 Schroeder house you can see these lines which was coming from a Mondrian's uh, 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 from, uh, from a painting which is uh, similar to Mondrian's painting and Schroeder house was a 3D translation of uh, Bauhaus, um, the Estigil um, um, cra um, the art and craft and Ridwell's uh, chair is also there. So, this partition wall is a punctuate uh, is, is this line which uh, follows this um, lines of um, uh, the Estigil um, painting. So, there is a similarity of the approach. He have also designed many other uh, cardboard houses and few of the uh, cardboard houses were made. Uh, this is cardboard house 3 and this is cardboard house 10 and all these houses has a 2D elements with an assembly of 2D elements and um, uh, so it looks and um, um, all these elements are 
um, assembly of this uh, kind of cardboard. So, he made um, everything with the cardboard and then they, uh, he translated it into the design. So, it also has a, uh, so if you look at in totality, it has a uh, this modernist uh, uh, approach of similar kind of design palette. So, there is no curvilinearity added in his design, no curvilinearity, only the uh, rectangular uh, parts are um, there, but then it changed into the complexity because he have uh, he start, uh, he added many elements and uh, it um, was not modern minimalist thing. It became a postmodern design, and then uh, because of this lot of elements which is coming, and then again it's not following the function. It's uh, totally from the visual aesthetic. So this um, uh, he's uh, thinking about the solid and void, and then the relationship between these uh, different elements and how visually it will look good holistically. So, in the next class we will um, discuss about few um, um, uh, the uh, other movements of postmodernism uh, and how they have uh, the uh, reaction, um, uh, they are the reaction against modernism and how they have taken inspiration from modernism. Thank you.